Welcome to the Courage Barbell Unlimited Podcast with your host, legendary powerlifter and strength athlete, Chad Ikes. For most, the journey of strength starts in the gym, but should inevitably expand through all aspects of life. Join us as we discuss all things strength. Now, here's your host, Chad Ikes. Hey, hey, everyone out there. We're back. Sorry for being away for, I don't know, a couple months maybe. If you listen to the last episode, you'll kind of understand why. But we're back. I have a new quote I want to talk about. And I'm going to attach that to uh, a couple stories about the BMX bikes that I just, well, one's done, the other one's almost done. Um, and these are my first, like, truly, like, ground-up builds. Um, one of one of them I bought the frame almost three years ago, I think, and I've been trying to get parts, and during COVID, I couldn't get the parts I wanted, but this was, like, my first build, so I wanted to get the exact parts. So let's start with the quote. This is a quote by Josh Billings. I really like this one. It's one that I've said. It's a pretty simple quote. It's one that I've kind of quoted myself most of my life. Um, Life consists not in holding good cards, but in playing those you hold well. So getting the great cards isn't the biggest deal. It's playing the cards that you do have to the best of your ability. I mean, how many people have won hands with the shittiest cards possible? Just because you have good cards doesn't mean you're going to be successful. And just because you have bad cards doesn't mean you're not going to be successful. It's all in your perspective of how you look at it and making the best you can. Yeah, it'd be nice to always have a great hand. But sometimes that doesn't happen. And sometimes that actually makes winning the pot even more rewarding because you started from a tougher place. So no matter what your life is, no matter what's happened, no matter what you're born with, it's up to you to do the best you can with that. And even if you're born, like how I know, I've known many people that had, or should I say were born with great things and they ended up being miserable. I know people whose parents had tons of money and left them tons of money and they're still miserable. I knew athletes that from what I could see, man, they had the genetics to pretty much do whatever they want, but they also ended up being some lazy people because they never had to work for anything and they never learned that skill. So to be the best of the best, you can't just rely on your genetics. You have to have the work ethic and seek the knowledge and push yourself. Um, You know, if you're in the NFL, if you're in the NBA, even if you're a Division I football player, you know, if you're in the top 10 or 20 powerlifters in the world, if you're going to the world's strongest man on TV, you're a one percenter. Like, you're one percent of the population. You're doing better than anyone, and and just genetics isn't going to get you there. Uh, Training, intelligence, knowledge, all that stuff is going to get you there. So I think one of the one of the examples I'm going to use my BMX bikes for this, and, and probably go into a couple other stories. When I was a kid growing up, my parents didn't have a whole lot of money. There's times where we were like, you know, baloney three meals a day, kind of struggling, and but my parents both worked really really hard, and and I can say I always got what I needed. Didn't always get what I wanted. Um, so when I was growing up, I ended up getting my my BMX bike was a was a Huffy. And anyone who knows is a Huffy is like nowadays I would put an old Huffy up against anything you buy in a department store right now. But the Huffy was nowhere near the top of the line. The Huffy was the bike that like anybody could have. And I had cousins that were riding Mongoose, GT, you know, Diamondback. Like they had all these cool bikes 
that I wanted so bad, but I, I got a Huffy. And it was burgundy and chrome. And, like, if my dad was washing his car, I was washing my bike. You know, I was always trying to get what I could, maybe new handlebars, maybe new grips. I didn't care if it was a Huffy or not. I was trying to ride as hard, if not harder than everybody else. You know, I was. you go off that jump on your nice bike, I don't care. Me and my Huffy will do that, too. I don't care. And I didn't let it tear me up that I didn't have the other bikes. But I wanted them. I mean, I wanted that bike, you know, I would ride my cousins and, and whatnot. And I'm like, oh, this is so nice. And even by when I was in, I remember when I was in fifth grade, I went to my dad and I go, hey, dad, I want to take my bike apart. And he goes, well, what's wrong with it? And I go, nothing. I just want to take it apart and see how it works. And I want to grease everything up and I want to keep everything in great shape. And I just want to take it apart. And he's like, all right, let's do it. And we lived in Houston, Texas at the time, and the people before us had converted the uh, garage into another room. So we went in that room, and my dad helped me take it all the way apart, like spread everything out, and then we put everything back together. So if you follow my Instagram, the bike that I just built is burgundy and chrome, and it's Maybe somebody can argue that some of my parts aren't the absolute best, but I spent a lot of money on it and I got all the parts that I think are the best parts that I wanted. And it's like a tribute to my, to the Huffy that I had that may not have been the best, but it got me and took me to a lot of different places and I had a lot of fun on it and I did the best I could with the hand I was dealt. And now the second bike, and if you follow my Instagram, which is just Chad Ikes, you can see pictures of it. And I, I actually think it looks pretty damn cool. Um, and it rides beautifully. And then I'm working on a second bike right now that is kind of one of the bikes I always really liked when I was a kid was uh, one of the Diamondbacks. And it was basically gold, black, and chrome. So I chose to go with a different frame because like, trying to find one of the old classic One's is just crazy expensive, but uh, I really like S and M BMX stuff, and they redid a Challenger frame, which is from the '90s, and they re-released them. And I they had a chrome one, and I'm like, oh my lord, that's I love that. So I bought that one, and I've been picking parts for it. It's not quite the level of my other one, but it's going to be really nice. And that's kind of like the tribute to this is the one I wanted when I was a kid. And couldn't afford it. But now I can afford it. And I'm going to build it. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to build it myself. Uh, so that's where that one is. And there's a that's funny because there's a lot of things in my life. Or a few things in my life that I do because of my past. Because at the time I couldn't get what I wanted but I've worked my ass off and I've, and I've done okay. And I mean, I still want to do more and I still want to be better and I still want more. Uh, but there's these little things in my life that it's like, I can have that now. Um, a lot of people don't know. One of the reasons I wear vans is because of my childhood. Uh, one of the main reason I wear, well, I should say this. One of the main reasons I wear vans is because I really like the flat sole shoe. I usually get a half size bigger than what I need. Um, I, at first, they in, irritate me, but once you once you wear them for a little bit, you can spread the toes out and 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 open the toe box, and they get really comfortable. It's really easy to root when you're walking and to think about rooting when you're walking. And even the pedals that I put on my bikes now are made because I can root while I'm riding. And Vans allow me to do that really good. One of these days, I'm going to find someone to team up with because I want to design my own shoe um, or figure out how to get that process going myself. The reason I wear checkered vans is because, and that kind of ties in with my BMX bike, when they were popular and I was a kid, I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to have tennis shoes. So I was born 
severely pigeon toed and it made me slow. So when, whenever we were running and playing games and tag and hide and seek and all that stuff, like I always got picked last cause I was slow. And then like when, when all the kids, when we're all sitting around and like, let's play tag, like my heart would sink. And I'd be like, well, let's, can we play, let's play hide and seek. Cause I'm like, then it gives me, I can use my brain. Like I can try to, I can try to get to the point where my speed isn't the only thing that's going to control the outcome of this. But I had to wear these patent leather shoes till I was in, I know I was in middle school before I could actually have a pair of tennis shoes. And at night, my dad would take this bar and I had to wear the, the patent leather shoes to bed. And my dad would clamp this bar to the bottom of them that held my feet like shoulder width apart, basically, and pointing straight up. And then I would get up in the morning and I couldn't get them off because my dad's huge. And my brother couldn't get them off because my dad's huge. And I'd have to crawl around the house. And then just think about trying to stand up and pee and you're like trying to balance on this little pivot tightening thing on the bottom of a bar on the bottom of your shoes. And I can't even remember. I, I, I think I had to do that in maybe middle school. And so there's no way. And then, and then vans come out and I'm like, oh, checkers, those are cool. And, you know, I was in I was in the BMX bikes and that kind of stuff. And like I wanted those shoes so bad. Couldn't get them. Couldn't get them. Always asking, couldn't get them. And I got in a lot of fights because of those patent leather shoes, dude. And then, like, the first shoes I was able to dot, the podiatrist actually let my mom get was like, it was like some of the, the all gray, like, New Balance shoes that the kids would make fun of those, too. And so I got, I get in a lot of fights about my shoe. I got pretty, pretty sensitive about it after a while, uh, which is kind of funny now. So now at this point, I'm like, even before they started getting popular again, like I started wearing them all the time and I'm like, I couldn't have these when I was a kid and I'd like these. So now I can wear them whenever I want and I can afford to buy as many pairs as I want. I usually only have one or two cause I like them when they're worn out. But, uh, cause I think it's better for your feet when they're worn out. The toe box is spread. Like I said, you can root, you can do all that stuff. I'm really into the whole concept of. Shoes that allow you to use your feet because they're, they're, it's muscles. They need to be used. So I grew up dealing with that whole thing. And I mean, it turned out by the time I got into middle school or actually more like high school and I started lifting and I started training, I was able to develop like pretty big thighs. And I got to the point where I was like, not one of the fastest kids in school, but I was definitely the fastest big kid in school. And to the point where when I was throwing throwing the shot putting discus for the track team, I could go run with the only sprinters I couldn't beat were the seniors. Um so I could I could move for for a, a big guy. And I think a lot of that was due to growing up where I was slow and growing up where I couldn't do these things and growing up where I had to overcome this shit and that taught me once I got into athletics and stuff that taught me how to be tough and how to overcome it taught me how to play my hand better and even when I got into powerlifting like with I had to screwed up sleep I'm suffering from depression and I kept going and I kept working and learning and figuring out how can I get around this how can I take advantage of you know, maybe I don't have the the athletic genetics, but what do I have an advantage in? I have an advantage in being hard headed. I have an advantage that I'm not going to quit. So it was taking the bad hand I was dealt and going, how can I play this the best to my best ability? So I like that quote, and I and I like the idea of I don't know why, but I like the idea of that the cards in the hand because. And you're also, you're going to get, if you sit down and play poker, you're going to get good hands and bad hands. That's life. Life is good and bad. Everybody's going to have good and bad. But it's not important. Each hand is not important in itself. 
but how you look at each hand and how you perform each hand is going to be an overall of whether you're going to win or lose on that table. You know, if you're the kind of person that every time you get a bad hand, you're like, son of a bitch, bad hand, why shit always happened to me? Now you just put yourself in a negative state. You're going to make negative bad decisions. And then when it comes good, now you're like, oh, ah, great hand, and you're going to screw that up too. Like you need to kind of be, have some little bit of a level hand and go, hmm, bad hand. All right, what can I do with this? Oh, hey, man, I got a good hand. Let's see how this to- let's see how this one comes out. And it's learning to deal with those hands throughout life. And we're all going to have positive and negatives. We're all going to have things in life that we suck at. And we're all going to have some things in life that we're good at. Sometimes it's going to seem like more. I mean, you have the kid that knows computers really well. And ends up getting a great paying job and has a good life. But he sucked at sports. You know, you have the kid that's great at sports, but he's a moron. We all have a little bit of this and that, and it's it's a mixture. And it's it's if we can take the things that we're not so lucky at or the things that we're bad at and play that hand well, that's going to make us even better for the things that we are good at. Um, it was kind of like I mentioned the the athlete that has the great genetics, but doesn't learn how to work for it. And once it gets to the highest level, it's not about genetics anymore. Like it's about your work ethic and putting all that stuff in. And if you don't learn that, you're not going to make it at the top. Okay, guys, I'm going to end that one right there. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gives you something to think about. And until next time, I am out of here. Thanks for listening to the Courage Barbell Unlimited Podcast. For more information, please visit couragebarbell.com. Until next time.